Alright, hello guys. In this video, I'm going to be presenting you guys my October forecast for 2019. Now, what we're looking at right now is a sneak peek of our overall forecast. Stay tuned to the end of the forecast for me to unveil what's underneath these question marks. But before I get started with this video, though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather-related content. And also, make sure to check out the links in the description for our social medias. Now, first things first, we're going to be looking at our precipitation forecast. And it doesn't look too eventful here uh, not a lot going on in the west. It's going to be dry and then wet at times, and it's going to end up being average in the long run, I believe, or at least very, very close to average for most areas west of the Rockies. Now, just to the south of you in Arizona and New Mexico alike, we are going to be dealing with some above average precipitation to begin the month, and this is going to lead to slightly above average precipitation overall during the entire month. And it's the same story for everywhere east of the Rockies, which is pretty notable. We've been quite dry along a lot of the areas in the east, uh, so it's it's really good news that we are getting some precipitation. I've been getting a lot of people mentioning that they're wondering when the precipitation is coming to the eastern United States, and it is finally coming. And also, I would like to mention that for Texas, we do look like we will be getting a bit of precipitation, at least average amounts of precipitation this month, which is extremely good news for you guys, with the exception of some of those eastern regions and coastal regions of Texas that got impacted by Imelda. We've been dealing with very dry conditions for that state, so it's really good news to see that we are going to be getting some precipitation for you guys during the month of October. Now, I wanted to also mention that we do have our second shade of green there for the Dakotas, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Iowa. A lot of these regions are going to be dealing with even further above average precipitation. And really, it looks like the extent of above average precipitation and consistency is what really sets these states apart. Uh, on all different you know time frames during the month, it looks like they will be dealing with a lot of precipitation. So that's why they get the second shade rather than just the first. Now, moving on to our photo feature segment of the video. This is a completely new segment. I'm going to be doing these during the weekly forecast and the monthly forecast. I will be making a video later talking more about the photo features and how you can get your photo featured and how I'm going to be doing it throughout the weeks and months in the future. Now, our winner is Matt Harped. 27 I yeah so you can go follow him I'm gonna be shouting out everybody obviously that I do make these for so you can go follow him if you want he has a excellent photo here of at Billings Logan International Airport and we see a beautiful airplane there with a rainbow behind it this was my favorite photo that got sent in in the month of September uh, but if you would like your photo to possibly be featured during the weekly forecast and the monthly forecast, you have to tag our link in the description as well as the pinned comment. You have to tag us in the photo and we will be selecting three each week during the weekly forecast and be presenting those. And then one at the end of the month, which is the overall winner in my favorite photo during the entire month. Now, moving on to our temperature forecast, we're going to be dealing with warmer than normal conditions there for the southeastern United States, especially in the middle to later portion of the month, I believe we will be dealing with still some of that little bit of a ridge there. I know that's disappointing news, but it's just the truth. It does look like we will be dealing with some more ridging there throughout the month of October. The good news is, though, for the areas in the north, central, and northeastern United States is that it does look to go a little bit further south this time around, and we won't be dealing with quite as much ridging up there, actually slightly below average temperatures there for Minnesota, Wisconsin, Michigan, New England, upstate New York. So these areas are going to be dealing with a lot of relief from that heat particularly in the early portions of the month, but I do see the chance for the middle and later portion of the month to also have average to below average temperatures alike for these regions. We might start out the month for like the first five days still feeling like it was in September, but like I mentioned in my previous videos, there's going to be a big switch around the 4th or 5th. This is when we're really going to see the actual temperature pattern set up the way I think it will be for the entire month. Now, out west, northwest, and then areas in Montana and some of those areas just to the east of the North Rockies, we're going to be dealing with that medium shade of blue. We're going to have a little bit more consistent cold for these regions. It looks like the early, middle, and later portions of the month will be dealing with below average temperatures, and that's why they earn the second shade of blue. And then obviously the orange down in the deep south there in the southeast, we it's same story, consistent warmth is going to lead to us getting that medium shade of orange there as well. 
Now, for your overall forecast, a lot's going on here. Uh, we're going to start with the west, though. In that gray region for California, Nevada, Utah, we're going to be dealing with average conditions as far as temperatures and precipitation is concerned. Not a lot to note there, so that's why they're in the average area there. But to your pink region there, to your northwest, we're going to be dealing with cooler with storminess at times. The storminess doesn't seem quite consistent, but I do think that we will be dealing with multiple potent storms throughout the month. It'll be, I mean, it's hard to say, honestly, at this point, because they're showing inconsistency with the precipitation for this region. So we could be anywhere from slightly below average precipitation to slightly above average precipitation. But you saw my precipitation forecast that we're calling for average because that's right in the middle. Now, in that white region, we're going to be dealing with more snow chances for a lot of the rocky regions as well as some of those Wyoming, Montana, and Dakota areas to the east of the Rockies. More snow chances as we head into the month of October, and this isn't abnormal whatsoever. I just wanted to mention it that we will be dealing with more and more snow as we get closer and closer to wintertime, obviously, and there wasn't really much else notable about that area. So I just wanted to mention that we're going to be dealing with more snowfall chances for that region throughout the month of October. Now, for the lower four corner states, again, a wet start for Arizona and New Mexico, as well as some portions of Texas we're going to be dealing with, again, a lot of precipitation to start the month, so a wet start for you guys, and then kind of a question mark beyond that. I don't really think we'll be dealing with too much more above average precipitation after that, but at the end of the month, it will come out above average, or at least slightly above average. Now, for Texas and a little bit of Oklahoma there, we're going to be seeing some drought relief. Again, at least average precipitation, maybe even above average precipitation for this region, which is extremely good news because I've been hearing a lot of you complain about it being dry for months and months and months for Texas. So we're looking at some significant relief from that. Now, to your north, cooler first half in that light blue region, and then the later half, we it's kind of a question mark once again. Models are leaning towards it warming up in the second half. I think that it could go either way. It could be cooler for the second half or warmer for the second half, but we're going to lean towards just a cooler first half, and then we'll we'll see once we get there for the second half of the month as it's so inconsistent what the models have been showing for this region. In the southeast, warmer but wet, so there's good news and bad news. A lot of you have been complaining about how dry it's been and how warm it's been. We, it's still going to be warmer, but we will be seeing it get uh, more precipitation, so there is some good news, even though we have some bad news as well for you guys. Now, in the north, central, Great Lakes, and northeastern regions of the United States, we're going to be dealing with cold shots throughout the month. I can see that, obviously, from the 4th through the 10th, we will be dealing with some significant cool shots for early October. And then beyond that, it looks like we will be dealing with average to below average temperatures throughout the rest of the month. So there will be cold shots at times for all of these regions. And it's going to be significantly cooler than September was comparatively to normal because September was, a, you know, far above average for these regions. So it, it's going to be a significant difference from what you've been feeling for the past month before this. And then... For the interior New England and upstate New York regions, we're going to be dealing with possibly some snow in later portions of October. We do see that sometimes. So I just wanted to mention that this is going to be, this month is going to be when we probably see our first chances at at least flurries for that region and maybe even some light accumulations in some of the high elevations out there. It does happen sometimes. So I wanted to mention that, that we might be dealing with that as we head into the later portions of this month, especially. Now, our month review, which is another uh, new segment for the monthly forecast, we're going to be reviewing the most significant weather events that took place during the month. A, I forget what their name was, but somebody mentioned this to me in my Instagram DMs. They made this great suggestion. So I'm going to be doing these from now on in the monthly forecast and seasonal forecast, doing a month and seasonal reviews. So we're going to be starting out with Dorian. Here we're looking at the satellite imagery from Dorian. And the reason I'm doing these segments is because I feel like it's going to be good just to be able to remember everything that happened in the month. And if you ever look back at these monthly forecasts, you'll be able to be like, oh yeah, Dorian did happen during September of 2019. I mean, obviously we will never forget that, but uh, for less significant things, it will be um, interesting to just go back and remember. So here's satellite imagery of Dorian as it was a Category 5 status hurricane over Grand Bahama and Great Abaco, absolutely devastated these two islands particularly and affected the, the southeast and mid-Atlantic states of the United States as well, but nowhere near as much as it did uh, the Bahamas, obviously. As you can see, here was our forecast. 
our five-day forecast when it was over the Bahamas. And this did have significant impacts on Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, Virginia, and I think even Maryland, Delaware, and New Jersey potentially. Uh, but I know for Virginia, at least is the, at least that's how far north it got. And uh, we were dealing with wind, rain along the southeast, but the Bahamas. Here's some pictures of some damage. I I, I don't know if this is from Freeport or or if this is from Grand Bahama or Great Abaco, but it's from one of them, and it's absolutely just devastation. And here's another one. You can see just cars everywhere, destroyed, flooding rains, palm trees left without any leaves on them. It is absolutely devastated, and this will be one of the most memorable hurricanes of all time, and we will never, ever forget it. Also, Tropical Storm Imelda impacted regions in Texas this month around Tuesday, September 17th. It started it headed on shore, and this brought significant flooding. Here was the NAM 3KM total uh, precipitation forecast 60 hours out. And this one, the NAM had a great handle on this. Uh, 24 inches plus is definitely what we saw for a lot of those regions in Texas. So again, we will always remember this one as well as it was one of the top five wettest tropical cyclones, I think, of all time, at least for the United States. So it was significant flooding for Texas. And then for our third month review and our final one, we're going to be dealing with a major Montana and Idaho blizzard, maybe even Wyoming, for to end to close out the month of September. We're going to be dealing with potentially up to 50 inches of snow for Montana and 12 inches plus for you know high elevation areas in Washington, Oregon, California, Wyoming, Utah. Uh, so significant snowfall for this early in the season, particularly the areas in Montana getting 50 inches. That is significant no matter what time of year it is. 12 inches in those other states isn't completely unheard of, but 50 inches in Montana is just absolutely insane. Even if it's only like, you know, 30 inches plus, it's just going to be such a, such a significant blizzard type event. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, send in your photos and videos to the Instagram. Tag us in them, and you could be featured in next month's photo feature as well as our weekly photo feature. We're going to pick the top three from each week and do those as well. So, anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.